Hi everyone. Uh, first of all, Happy New Year. I hope you've had a great start to the year, 2019, another year ahead of us. So tonight I'm going to be reviewing this very particular single cask distillery only bottling by Kilhoman. Kilhoman, um, I don't know if you've tried some of it, is from Arla. The first distillery to open on Arla in 124 years. Now that's saying something, obviously. It is a very tiny distillery compared to any of the other big famed long rich history um, distillery. So opened in 2005 and on the box it says Kilhoman, Isla's farm distillery. And um, I've actually been to Kilhoman and it is literally a farm which happens to have a distillery at the end of it. I personally didn't know Kilhoman existed. I was going around my happy six day tour of Arla and literally stumbled upon Kilhoman by a fluke. I was driving down this country lane to this sort of secluded beach where I wanted to get some photos. Someone had suggested go down to the beach and you'll get some really good photos. And I saw a sign for distillery. It's like, well, you know, I'll go in here, go have a look. Had a look and it is small by every proportion. Very tiny little distillery. They've got this single wash still single spirit still everything's just small um the visitor center i have to say is very beautifully laid and staff is very attentive um obviously when i went there i told them what i do for a living which is i'm really into my whiskies and they really showed me a good time just so happened to be there at the same day another lady was traveling from states who does some reviews and does uh Bit of writing about whiskey so both of us were very looked after they obviously didn't know i was coming but it still showed me a really really good time we did a great tour of the distillery showed us around even took us into where the eggs are stock which is literally a shed with some plastic sheets on top um kind of like your sort of modern day warehouse in any big city so nothing like any other aging warehouse i've been to on Allah or any of the other distilleries all around um Scotland where they had all these big stone aging warehouses covered in lots of moss and um, well full of condensation as well but this place was just it was so different but being small doesn't mean and being a young whiskey doesn't mean it doesn't have legs these guys are onto something I have no idea what they're doing but all the whiskies even young ones just seem to have some legs and this one definitely has legs so something that's really unique about Kilhoman, obviously it's a farm distillery. They grow their own barley on site. They've got their own farms on site. But they also take a bit of barley from uh, Port Allen Maltings and use that as well. But they kind of differentiate when they bottle or uh, release the stock. They mentioned if um, the whiskey has been made with uh, their own barley or uh, from barley from uh, Port Allen Maltings. So something very unique about Kilhoman obviously is they grow their own barley, they malt their own barley, they obviously distill on Ala, they age all their whiskey on Ala and it's bottled right there at the distillery, which is something very, very unique and something they sort of have a bit of a claim to. How are they going to keep that up going forward? Obviously their capacity, I looked it up on Wikipedia, is only about 200,000 liters a year, which is very small compared to any of the big um, Scottish distilleries. So it'd be interesting to see how they can keep it up going forward. I would say they might have to get uh, barley from outside of Allah and all the other kind of stuff. But hey, we'll see. So this particular one, obviously I visited Kilhoman. I picked up my own Kilhoman Glinky uh, and Glass. And at the time they had this particular bottle on for sale. So this one starts its life. It doesn't say particular, but Marita says... Most of the whiskey starts its life in a bourbon cask or a little amount of sherry cask. But what Kilhoman has been doing really, really good is doing short aging in a different cask to give it sort of a well-rounded or give it a different niche. So this one in particular is finished in an uh, ex-Bordeaux French wine cask, Sautrunus finish, which tends to be a sweeter, lighter style of uh, wine. So it's finished in a wine cask. Bottle of cask strength and it's bottled at 58% ABV which is quite high, reason why I brought water with me this time. But it was there, oh correct me, I think I might have said 124 years, first distillery in 125, sorry. 
And what else could I tell you about? Uh, not much else to tell, but I'm sure you can see the bottle. Just a really heavy bottle with this big sort of round bottom. So, so it adds to the experience a little. And this one in particular is cast number 209, put down in 2012. It's actually distillation date of 24th of April 2012 and bottled on 29th of September 2017. So makes it about five years and three months, which is not a long period of time. But boy, this whiskey stands on its legs for a five-year-old. It's just outstanding. Obviously, non-filtered natural color. You can see the color in there. I'll show you in the glass as well. And it's just got some notes on the back. This one in particular is bottle number 136 out of 290. Um, I've had this bottle in my life since about March 2018. So roughly nine months and um i'm really really nursing it because yeah i have this fear i'm gonna run out before i can go back to scotland and get another one of something similar in quality kill kill home and give it a go wow so very high in alcohol and it does bite the nose a little does hit the nose really really quickly Got all these notes on the back here as well of the bottle. Wow, the smoke hits you straight away. Not an intense way, it is. It's not a heavily peated um, barley they use, obviously. But the smoke is slowly just subsiding and letting just a little bit of honey and sweetness come through. Wow. Bit of citrus note as well. Really, really nice. But the smoke sort of just is hitting my nose nostrils now. It's really good. Well, cilantro. Intense smokiness comes up and now it's just letting go letting a little bit of citrus sort of lemony character come through and the sweetness of the palate is just really really good I, w I don't think it's something I've experienced with some other whiskey obviously I've never tried a whiskey that's finished in that particular type of um, wine cast before so it's something quite unique for me but it's just a rich, unique experience. It is a young whiskey. You can tell that. The flavors are quite... It's quite different. You know, it's not as rich in flavor. But it does coat the palate um, in a real intense way. But it starts to linger. And now this lovely sort of smoke is lingering on the palate. And just on the top of the tongue, still just a little sort of citrusy character is still there. obviously been in love with this whiskey i love my pt and smoky drams but this one's very very different because obviously i have a theory you've got pt and smoky whiskeys which are very dry kind of like an odd bag tin or a fruit tin real rough as guts love it don't get me wrong rough as guts no sweetness at the end very dry finish um with this one it's got this lovely well-rounded sweetness at the end but the smoke is still lingering, which is really rewarding the palate for someone like me who likes the smoky and the peatiness, but does like the little bit of sweetness or roundness at the end as well. I might just give this a try tonight with just a little bit of water. Not much. Just two or three drops. Everyone does it in their own sort of unique way. See what it does to it. See on the palate, oh sorry, on the nose. Definitely calmed it down. down. The sort of smoky character is not biting my nose as much. Mm. So that little bit of water has let that sort of citrus, the tiny bit of honey character come through. 
And it's definitely calmed that smirky character down. It's still there. It's all over my palette. But it's not as forward. And as I speak now, the smirky character is again rising and mm, giving really, really good notes of charcoal. Charcoal? But overall, I mean, I'm in love with this whiskey. That's obviously quite clear. I've been savoring it a bit. You can tell it's a young whiskey. It does feel a bit light on the palate in between, sort of the... How do I say? Like, so, a whiskey that's been aged for a long time, it's got quite a heavy um, texture to it. This one does cut through, even though the ABV is very generous at that cast strength, 58%. You can tell it is a young whiskey, just on the palate. Wow, love it. If I had to rate it, and I know someone commented on one of my videos the other day that maybe I should stay away from trying to rate them. But I'm going to do it anyway because I'm doing all these videos for my own personal pleasure as well. And I do want to go back in time and sort of memorize or remind myself what I thought of different drams. And I think something like this for a young whiskey still. And remember my criteria is nose, palate and finish. I would give it a good solid 85. I reckon that's a pretty honest score. I want to give it more because I like peaty smoky drinks, but it's maybe lacking something just a little bit, but it's still pretty outstanding. So 85 out of 100 would be my score. So if you've been liking my videos, please hit like and subscribe, share my video, spread the joy. I would really appreciate your help. Otherwise, um, enjoy the New Year's Day and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.